Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and welcome to very interesting game played in 1977. However, uh, it was not the game played, you know, over the board. It was the game played by Telex. And now, uh, for those who are, let's say, younger than 30 years old, uh, believe me or not, but we had the time in the history where there was no internet. So, you know, you couldn't just, you know, see it, open your, your, your platform and, and, and play with whoever you want around the world. Nowadays, you can play even against the grandmasters and, you know, sitting in your, uh, in your chair, drinking some coffee and having fun. However, at that time, uh, people played by telex. And it wasn't, of course, new idea, as in 19th century, by inventing telegraph, uh, people already played the matches. For example, France against um, England, and then later uh, America against Europe, and so on. So in 1977, telex was popular for sending the, the, the different kind of information. Uh, and the game was organized as the part of the match uh, between Soviet Russia and Australia. So uh, on the junior uh, board uh, was playing uh, Garry Kasparov. And Garry Kasparov was 14 years old. This is why he was playing on the junior board. Um, and his ranking estimated, he didn't have a feeder ranking at that time, is 2500. And I estimated because uh, at the same year he won the junior championship of Soviet Union. So he was... I can say that he was the best junior in the world. Uh, one year later also he won. Then he started to, to win also very serious tournaments for adults. Um, and two years later his ranking was already 2,595. So I believe estimation 2,500 is, is pretty okay. And in this game, Gary Kasparov gonna play as white. And his opponent, uh, who was played on the junior uh, board, was 19 years old guy. Uh, I don't know why, maybe that they, they had the rules that, you know, 19 years old guy is still the junior. I'm not sure about that. However, uh, his name was the guy West. Uh, and I estimate his ranking as 2100. Maybe it's a wrong estimation. Uh, you can judge yourself. However, uh Guy West, five years later, got the FIDE ranking 2220. And what we know more about Guy West, uh, just 14 years later, uh, he became the, the international master. His peak ranking was 2445. He was uh, 33 years old at that time, but he was never the chess professional. Um, he is still, I think, I believe, uh, at least according to the to the information in the internet, I'm not sure if, if I can believe that, he's a managing uh, director of internet company. Uh, so he's more like the, you know, business oriented, person who just loves chess so much that he got his uh, international master title. Very strong um, player. Uh, however, at that time, as I said, 19 years old, so that was the, the beginning of his career. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Garry Kasparov opened with e4. We have c5, Sicilian defense on the board, and now knight on f3 by uh, Garry Kasparov. And here the most popular moves are e6, d6, knight on c6. All of these uh, were played, you know, thousands of times. However, here we have knight on f6, uh, quite the sideline. Uh, knight on c3, defending the, the pawn on e4. As the, you know, pushing, there is always time for, for pushing that pawn. We have e d6 and now d4 so open sicilian variation c takes on d4 knight takes on d4 uh, and here bishop on b4 so bringing the bishop instead of moving to e7 uh, quite aggressive uh, moving to b4 uh, and now we have e5 uh, and knight on d5 and it looks like it's a it's a it's a pretty good uh, opening for black you know uh, this knight is pinned it's also attacked the the queen for example can come to a5 what can go wrong however uh, this opening uh, has a very interesting continuation Queen on g4, uh, and black has to really react somehow. Cannot play something like knight on c3. Uh, I mean, some of the players play something like knight on c3, uh, but it's not as attractive because after queen on g7, the rook is under attack. Uh, and also, if this knight moves somewhere, then c3 is, you know, attacking the bishop. So uh, black actually has to play rook on f8. And after a3, what to play next? 
uh, black are actually in troubles have to play something like knight on b5 uh, with the check with the attack on the on the knight but still a takes on b4 knight takes on d4 and now bishop on g5 with the attack on the queen it looks pretty dangerous uh, queen has to be moved let's say to b6 and then bishop h6 with the attack on the rook so rook has to be defended somehow there is not many ways here um, queen on b4 actually uh, and then after c3 the queen is under attack if the queen goes somewhere there then the knight gonna be taken and position of of white in the center is a uh, pretty strong also this queen has to watch on the rook so it's a pretty passive position so probably knight on f5 with the attack on the on the queen and after c takes on b4 uh, knight on g7 bishop g7 uh and this position uh we have couple of games in the in the database where white were doing pretty well uh and uh, were just winning both of the games so uh look at this pair of bishop uh, all the uh, you know diagonals all the um, uh, files are, are just open so ideal position for for white and black has really still have the problems with the development uh even the move like b5 can be very annoying uh, this pawn is a very annoying uh, and so on so queen on g4 uh, can be very difficult to face uh, the most popular answer by black is very risky uh, you know castle and we already know that in the french defense in the in the vinaver variation black gonna have a lot of problems with this pawn on e5 it's uh it's a very dangerous stuff for now bishop h6 so black has to uh, actually give the exchange uh, after g6 bishop on f8 queen on f8 with the idea of bringing the queen to to c5 uh so so that's the idea however queen on g3 you know defending and now queen on c5 uh, it can be played immediately but then this knight gonna help with the defending so uh, everything is fine in the white position black doesn't have the compensation for the uh, for the exchange so knight on c6 also can be played just to exchange this knight but it's still you know considered as as much better for for white uh, however, uh, Gary Kasparov play uh, some uh, not not something sharp like this, but very calm bishop on d2, a very solid move. Uh, and now we have knight on c3 and b takes on c3. So we have kind of vinaver variation in French. So imagine you play Sicilian defense. Uh, you are prepared for for that and now suddenly you get all the ideas in the French defense and you have to defend and it's uh, always very difficult to do especially for the player who who usually don't play at the French defense I'm not sure about the guy West however uh, if he plays a c5 uh, then maybe he doesn't know all the ideas with the French defense or maybe that was his preparation I'm not sure about that however here bishop on e7 is usually you know played in this so it's it's well known uh, and bishop on e7 is the main line but still black has to face this queen on g4 with the attack on g7 and now uh, you know play castle give up the exchange or play something like king on f8 and you know play all of these moves very hard uh, you know opening very similar to the french defense to the vinaver uh, or play something like g6 but as you see already this this just doesn't look good for example bishop on d3 uh, knight on c6 with the attack on the on the pawns on queen on g3 d6 uh, and after exchanging let's say h4 h5 and continue the attack on the king side uh, as i said very difficult position to play um, by by black uh, so here guy west didn't play bishop on e7 but rather bishop on f8 and he was actually criticized a couple of times uh, but it's not so bad move because 18 years later believe me or not vasily ivanchuk uh, in the vinaver variation uh, after a3 uh, he played bishop on f8 of course the knight was already on on g8 however gary kasparov uh, who was playing as white lost this game so Ivanchuk was, uh, you know, winning with this move, bishop on f8. It's not so bad move. However, keep in mind that this knight, uh, you know, replacing the pawn um, in the, if you compare to the French. Uh, so this is like the pawn on steroids, which, you know, controls a lot of squares around. So it can be, can be very annoying. Uh, 
So it, it's it's slightly different, you know, in this Sicilian um, variation uh, than the French, but the main ideas are very similar. So bishop on d3 is obviously one of them, you know, uh, targeting h7, but also preparing uh, moves like, you know, uh, f4, f5, then maybe g4 and, and continue them, the attack on the king side, which can be very dangerous. However, black has something what French defense player doesn't have, d6. So it can challenge and attack this pawn without moving F f7 pawn. So uh, that's, you know, uh, something which is, which is good for black. And usually in this position, white plays something like f4 uh, or even e takes on d6. All of this is okay. However, Kasparov plays a uh, queen on e2 in this position. Uh, and here is the critical position of the game. Uh, black can play many moves, which, uh, you know, still keeps them in the game. So knight on c6 is a pretty good move. Bishop on e7, uh, it's still okay move. Um, a6 can be played just to take away the, the b5 uh, square from the white pieces. Uh, and, and even taking on e5 is, is completely okay. Okay, so this, these moves uh, are okay. However, Guy West play knight on d7 and he was pretty much criticized. Uh, a lot of people ask, hey, what, what, what was the idea behind that move and stuff? Uh, and here Guy West actually uh, answered um, in, in some websites, uh, for example, chessgames.com under this game, uh, that, hey, give me a break because, you know, at that time I was, you know, complete patzer uh, and I just didn't know what, what I'm playing. I, I was just, you know, playing the game. Uh, and then I, I face Gary Kasparov and, and, and that's all. So uh, he has a lot of sense of humor. He's still engaged into, into the chess. He has a huge distance to himself. So um, uh, definitely very nice uh, answer. Uh, however, this is the critical position. So it's time to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So for those who, who don't know who is the patzer, because maybe you heard that, maybe you don't know, uh, I found the best explanation of the patzer, because you know, this is slang, chess slang, uh, that the patzer is uh, the lowest form of the chess player. Uh, when he attempts the strategy, it is worse than his tactics. And uh, when he attempts the tactics, it is worse than his strategy. Uh, but some people, you know, refers to the, the patzers. If you go to the chess club, you always uh, see one guy who has, you know, uh, a lot to say. He comments all the moves, what, why they are bad, what, why they, you know, should be better, what's wrong with them. However, when they play their own games, um, they make a lot of uh, blunders and stuff and they always have explanation why that happens. Uh, and also uh, sometimes they they call other people patzer so 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 that's one of the definitions i found uh, however the move we are looking for here is of course a knight on e6 the point is this is a pretty common um, knowledge that this pawn on e6 can be very vulnerable in the in the french defense but also uh, in the sicilian so this knight usually cannot go to d7 because there are a lot of ideas, a lot of tactics um, against the, the e6, especially if this diagonal with the queen is open. Here is the problem. So knight on e6 by Gary Kasparov. And now the problem is the knight cannot be taken. The queen is under attack and the knight cannot be taken uh, because of this queen on h5 immediately. And now uh, if you play g6, then the, of course, uh, bishop on g6, h takes on g6, queen on g6, you have to move your, your king, so king e7, but now bishop on g5, the very nice skewer, uh, and after knight on f6, queen f6, and of course, uh, winning the queen and the game. So that's not possible. And if you play immediately king on e7, it looks much better as the pawn still controls f6. Uh, the problem is after bishop on g5, knight f6, uh, e takes on f6 can be played. Uh, and after g takes on f6, bishop f6, look at this. Very nice motif. So you can also learn that bishop on f6, uh, skewering the, the, the king uh, and winning the queen. And of course, if the bishop is taken, uh, then we win the queen this way. 
okay? Uh, the queen cannot be defended, so king f7, queen d8, and uh, white is, uh, of course, winning. So, uh, the knight cannot be taken. Guy West tried a queen on b6, and now uh, Gary Kasparov can win, uh, you know, by many ways. The position is, is, is completely won. However, he played knight on c7, and after this move, Guy West resigned. Uh, and he resigned because if the knight is taken, uh, then e takes on d6 with check, discover check and attack on the on the queen. So after king on d8, winning the queen and the game. So that's not possible. Uh, and also if king on e7 is even worse because it's actually forced checkmate in four. So e takes on d6, uh, king on d6, and now bishop f4, uh, king on c5, queen on e3, and now uh, after king on c6, this is a checkmate. Look at this. Uh, and the king cannot go to to b5 because it's controlled by the by the knight. So that would be a checkmate. And finally, if king on d8, then white gonna win the, the exchange. So uh, get this rook. Uh, and it looks like uh, black can win that knight. And that's true. However, uh, you know, just, just normal game. Let's see, queen on c5, white just castle, hide the king, uh, and after b6, let's say bishop on e3, uh, attacking the, the queen, so queen c6, now bishop on b5, improving the position of all the pieces, while black has to, you know, uh, still move the queen, so queen on a8, uh, and now e takes on d6, so as you already see, this bishop can, can go to g5, the king is still in the center, is completely lost position for, for black, so for example, f6, defending, defending that, rook f on e1, we have another threat coming, so uh, the position is already uh, pretty dangerous, this bishop can come with tempo, uh, so probably bishop on d6, but then rook a on d1 uh, and i'm not gonna show you the rest of the line but uh, you can already imagine how dangerous is this attack so uh, this is why after knight on c7 guy west just resigned so very interesting game very nice comments by uh, guy west and uh, and yeah if you like this this short video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you don't want to miss other games probably i will show you tomorrow the the game uh, i mentioned before um where ivanchuk actually won against kasparov by by playing this move bishop on f8 because it's a pretty fascinating move and it's very very unusual uh and yeah, press subscribe, smash the bell button, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.